Friends, good afternoon. Welcome to our five o'clock chapel. It is great to have you with us. Um, hands up if this is your first time at a weekly five o'clock chapel. In okay, so it's us. Welcome, and I'm welcoming myself too. This is my first time at a weekly Bombora Room Chapel. Um, I've not been able to be here the last uh, few weeks, so welcome to all those people who are first timers like me. I trust we all have a good time. Um, as we begin our time, I just want to thank all those people who've been so supportive, prayerful and encouraging uh, of Jeanette and I over the last couple of weeks as we've uh, dealt with the passing of Jeanette's dad. I said to folk in chapel this morning that at a time like that, to be amongst the saints and experience their care and encouragement is a great thing. It's a wonderful thing. So thank you, folk, uh, for just being so encouraging and supportive of us uh, during this time. It's a real privilege to be amongst the saints. So thank you. Uh, as we begin to, I need to let you know that uh, our, our dear friend uh, Tom Buckley, Tom and Jan are part of our Thursday chapel group and uh, Tom had been part of the Good New Gardens community for about the last I don't know, 15 months or so as his health declined and he um, passed away this morning. So I'm going to pray for uh, Jan and for the family. Uh, Jan and uh, her as part of the White Sands community. I just pray for uphold her and her family as they grieve Tom's passing. So let's pray. Uh, our gracious Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for Tom's life. Lord God, thank you for all the moments and the memories that you gave him, all the blessings that you gave him in this life. And Heavenly Father, now we want to pray for Jan and her family for all uh, her kids and her grandkids, that Heavenly Father, as they step through uh, this time of grieving, they know that they can take to you all that they think and feel and you will bear them up and you will carry them along. And Lord God, we ask that they might know that as deep as their grief is, they might know that your great love reaches even that far and it will strengthen them day by day. And we do pray for them now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And uh, friends, I want to welcome to our preacher for this afternoon, the Reverend uh, Paul James. Many of you might know Paul. He is the lead chaplain for Goodyear Gardens and Bay Breeze. Some of you uh, might not have yet met Paul, so we're going to hear him open God's word to us a little bit later, and then we'll have a little bit of catch-up with him about how things are going uh, in Bay Breeze and Goodyear Gardens. But to begin our time, let's uh, stand and sing together. And we're going to sing uh, Amazing Grace, My Chains Are Gone. And I want to thank our guitar band and our great singers uh, for leading us this afternoon. So if it's safe for you to stand, please stand as we sing together Amazing Grace, My Chains Are Gone.
Friends, please take a seat. As we reflect on God's amazing grace, we are conscious that he is, that amazing grace is so needful in our lives because we do not always live the way we ought. We do not say and do the things that, the things that Jesus would ask us to say and do. And so it's a great privilege, isn't it, as we come together as the community of God's people to take the time to be able to confess our sins to our Father in heaven, to each other, and then to ask uh, for forgiveness. So, so I'm going to encourage you now just to take a few moments in the quietness of your own heart and your own mind to do business with God, and then uh, a prayer will come up and we will uh, say together, a prayer of confession. So why don't you just take a few moments in your own heart and mind to do business with God and then we will pray together. So friends, would you pray with me please? Most merciful God, we humbly admit that we need your help. We confess that we have wandered from your way. We have done wrong and we have failed to do what is right. You alone can save us. Have mercy on us, wipe out our sins and teach us to forgive others. Bring forth in us the fruit of the Spirit that we may live as disciples of Christ. This we ask in the name of Jesus, our Saviour. Amen. And the powerful promise of Jesus that we read in 1 John is this. If anyone sins, if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the perfect offering for our sins, and not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. So as God's forgiven people, we now get to be built up by the hearing of God's word, which John is going to bring to us, and then by the teaching of God's word uh, that Paul's going to bring to us. So John, please, if you come and read God's word to us, that'll be great. Thank you. A Bible reading this evening is Psalm 139. O Lord, you have searched me and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you know it completely, O Lord. You hem me in behind and before. You have laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me, even, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, O God! How vast is the sum of them! Were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. When I am awake, I am still with you. If only you would slay the wicked, O God! Away from me, you bloodthirsty men. They speak of you with evil intent. Your adversaries misuse your name. 
Do I not hate those who hate you, O Lord, and abhor those who rise up against you? I have nothing but hatred for them. I count them my enemies. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there's any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, John, and good evening, everyone. Good to see you all. Good to be with you again. Wonder how comfortable you are knowing that God knows everything about you. How comfortable do you feel with that? Not very. Well, in this psalm, it's saying to us that God not only knows everything that happens in his world, that he's greater than we can imagine, which he is, uh, that he is present everywhere in the creation, which he is. Uh, Verse 1 of the psalm says to us that you know me. You have searched me. In verse 2, you have perceived my thoughts from afar. Uh, uh, Before a word is on my tongue, you know it completely, O Lord. See, it's not just that God knows everything. He knows us and he knows everything about us. He searches our hearts. He knows every thought, every word that comes to our lips. He knows the heart and mind of every person he has ever made. That's all of us, isn't it? And that can be a frightening thought, because I know my thoughts aren't always as pure as they ought to be. When I get frustrated with uh, people, I start writing the script in my mind straight away, what I'm going to say to get back at them. Have you ever done that? (laughs) We're not always helpful in the way that we act towards others. And, and God knows all the unkind words that are in my heart before I even speak them. He holds our whole life history in his mind. He never forgets. He has known us since before we were conceived, the psalm tells us. Uh, God brought us into being and created us, and he knows us from the moment that we were conceived. He didn't just create a magnificent, vast universe, which he did. Uh, He carefully, wonderfully and lovingly knitted your body together in your mother's womb. Isn't that an amazing thought? And every day, each each of our lives was set out by God before we drew our first breath through to the day that we draw our last. God knows us better than anyone. He knows us better than we know ourselves. Feeling more uncomfortable yet? (laughs) Well, do you feel like you'd rather God wasn't aware of some of the things in your life? Because if we're honest, that's probably a natural reaction, isn't it? There's no way to say or do anything in this life without God being right there to see it and hear it all. As we live our whole lives in the presence of God. Um, As John read for us in verse 7, the psalmist asks, Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? It's not just that we say God is everywhere in creation. It's that we personally can't escape his presence. There's nowhere to run, nowhere that we can hide from God. And if God knows our every thought and word, there will be times when we'll feel like running and hiding from him. Actually, the first humans did it, Adam and Eve. They tried to hide from God. But there's nowhere that we can go where we're not in his presence. Now, our natural reaction to that might be, this is bad news, wouldn't it? But the psalm writer doesn't seem to be thinking or saying that this is bad news. Uh, The fact that he lives his life in the presence of God 24 hours a day, seven days a week, is actually a comfort to him. Uh, It's not something that he fears, even though he knows that God is aware of every thought that has ever crossed his mind, both good and bad. 
He knows God has heard even the words that he's never spoken, both good and bad. And he knows nothing was ever hidden from God. In verses 19 to 22, we can see why we would have every reason to think this would be bad news for us. Uh, not just because it would be embarrassing, uh, but because those who do evil deserve God's judgment. Um, it says here in the psalm, we've all incurred God's anger and judgment. And Jesus amplifies that when uh, we read the Sermon on the Mount, where he makes it clear that uh, being angry at a brother or sister is places us as much under the judgment of God as being a murderer. Anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has committed adultery with her in his heart and is deserving of judgment. See, what Jesus was teaching us was that we all deserve God's judgment because of the evil that's in our hearts, regardless of how much of that makes its way out to the surface in our words and our deeds. And this psalm is so clear that God knows inside our hearts. He sees everything. And, that, and what, what he sees is everything that makes us deserving of God's judgment. And yet this truth in, in its entirety is still a comfort and a blessing to the psalm writer. Why? Where's the good news here? Well, it's this. That the God that we read about in this psalm, the God who knows everything about us and from whom we can never get away, the God who judges sin is the God who loves us and who leads those who trust in him in the way everlasting, eternal life. As the psalm comes towards its conclusion in verses 23 and 24, the psalmist prays using the, the same concept that's at the beginning of the, the psalm. As the psalm begins with the words, O oh Lord, you have searched me. The psalm concludes with the psalmist asking God to search him, to uncover every trace of evil and sin in his life. Search me, O oh God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Um, my dad, who passed away last year, had uh, a good expression about when you're servicing a car before you go away on holidays, you go in through the radiator cap and out through the exhaust pipe <laughs> and you look for everything that might be wrong with it so that you can fix it before you go away. Well, this prayer is a prayer for God to go in through the radiator cap and out through the exhaust pipe of our lives and uncover everything that's wrong and in need of repair. It's like, dear God, expose all the sin that I realise I could never hide for you and please fix it. Please make it right. And here's where the good news comes in. That God's purpose in exposing the sin of our every thought, word and deed is to show us the desperate state of our sinful hearts and lead us to his forgiveness, to repentance and faith. And that is the way everlasting that our psalm writer is talking about. Even though we live all of our lives in God's presence and he sees and knows everything that we think and say and do, even though we know we don't always treat him and each other the way that we should and that we rightly deserve his judgment, God shows us there is a better way in store, the way everlasting. And that way is God's son. Jesus Christ. In John 14, verse 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. 
No one comes to the Father except through me. As we come to know Jesus, we come to know God. As Jesus is the one who knows us better than we know ourselves. And not as an outsider. As Jesus, the Son of God, came and lived our human existence in this world. He knows what it's like to live like us, except for sin. But the amazing message of the Bible is that Jesus, the Son of God, knowing us as he does, came and laid down his life for us to take the punishment that we deserve for our sin, for every wrong word, thought and deed. He came to deal with God's rightful anger at people like us who don't always love him and love each other as we should. And he did that by dying on the cross for us. And he calls us to believe and to trust in what he did and to trust that his death has opened the way to forgiveness and the way to life everlasting. You see, friends, when we trust in Jesus, we invite God to go through our lives from radiator cap to exhaust pipe and to show us all the things in our lives that show us our need for Jesus and our need for him to have come and done what he did on the cross for us. And friends, that's something that God does continually and progressively through our lives when we come to faith in Jesus. He speaks into our lives through his word and in the power of his spirit living in us. God is with us every moment, every day, by his spirit, driving his word into our heart. You see, in one way, the longer we live by faith in Jesus, the more aware we become of just how sinful we really are. But at the same time, we become more aware, become more aware of the great extent of the mercy and grace of God in Jesus Christ. The way everlasting that God leads us in is to trust more and more deeply in God's mercy and grace in Jesus every day. To know that we never get to a point where we think that we've made it. That we need the mercy and grace of Jesus every day. And the more we're conscious of our sin, the deeper and more genuine will be our faith in Jesus. And it's through our faith in Jesus that we are saved and led in the way everlasting. Through faith in his work on the cross, God forgives every sin of our sinful hearts. Isn't that great news? Every single one. Even the ones that have never made it past our lips. And that means we no longer fear the bad news. We no longer fear the judgment that we all deserve. Which goes to show there's no need and no point in trying to hide or excuse our sin. Because the good news is here. The good news that God forgives our sin. When we acknowledge, when we confess and when we trust in what Jesus has done. That is the way everlasting. And may God lead and continue to lead all of us in that way everlasting. Amen.
Friends, I'm going to ask you now if you would like to stand and affirm your trust, your trust in the God who exposes all our sin and then leads us in the way everlasting as we trust in Jesus. If it's safe for you to stand, would you stand and say with me the Apostles' Creed, friends? So, friends, I ask you, in whom do you believe? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. If you're able to st stay uh, standing, friends, uh, we're going to sing again a great song which just reminds us of how Jesus has taken over our whole life, this life I live. Please take a seat. Now we're very grateful this afternoon for uh, Paul coming and preaching uh, to us, but I thought this might also be a great opportunity just to catch up with Paul. Some folk uh, will know Paul, some won't, and many of us are interested in uh, how things are going in Bay Breeze and in Goodyear Gardens, and so Paul has very kindly agreed to come and just give us a bit of an update. Anyway, welcome. 
Thank you. Uh, thank, thank you for preaching. Oh, my pleasure. Privilege. Uh, if you might just, I noticed that in the last few days you're just wearing surgical masks, and I know too mm. that you've got a new manager uh, for Goodyear and Bay Breeze. Do you want to tell us yep. some of the other things that are changing over sure. there? Sure. Yep. Well, this, uh, I never thought I would hear the words come out of my mouth that I'm so grateful to be able to wear a surgical mask <laughs> after those really restrictive white ones that uh, that we had to wear. So, yeah, that uh, it's just a little bit of a little easing of, uh, of things for us. Um, at the moment, there are no Anglicare homes with a COVID outbreak. Isn't that wonderful news? Praise God for, for that. <laughs> That is wonderful news. Um, it also means that life in our homes has been able to uh, to come back uh, a bit. So even during the Christmas period, uh, residents were really confined to the communities that uh, that they lived in. So whether that be Rockpool or river or beach or wherever it was, uh, just being isolated with those other 17 or less residents. Um, we pushed for that to uh, to be over quicker than what it was scheduled to be because things were, were going to well uh, were going well, and uh, and so we were very fortunate uh, that that restriction was relaxed and we actually celebrated with a party. I got the karaoke machine out and we sang and we danced and we had a wonderful time together. But it also means that we can do church face to face again, which we hadn't been able to do. Uh, for a couple of months, it was just me speaking into a TV camera and people watching upstairs. Uh, that was the case both at Goodhue and over here at uh, Baybury. So we're, we're very fortunate that, uh, that those things are beginning to lift and we pray we continue to move in, uh, in that direction. Um, as Gary said too, yes, we have a new manager. So uh, her name is Tracy Dennett. So Tracy will begin her fourth week with us tomorrow, uh, hopefully if she hasn't been put off for, by the first three weeks. <laughs> um, but uh, Tracy is fitting in really well. Um, she's a lovely lady. She's uh, very loving towards the residents and uh, good with her team. So we're very fortunate uh, to have her. Um, but we uh, also ha have Amy Alderson. Amy's been looking after uh, the home uh, in the time since Caroline uh, left us in September last year. Uh, and Amy has done a wonderful job and she's actually still on site with us for a few days each week uh, for the next few months. So we're, we're very fortunate in, uh, in that too. Paul, you just want to give us a little bit of a, like, you know, it's the great liberty you can only wear, you now only have to wear surgical masks, but you still have to wear surgical mask up uh, the staff team. The residents, uh, we, you know, people still need to do rap tests to go into uh, Goodhue and Baybreeze. How are the residents and how are the staff riding or going in this ongoing uh, sort of strange world of residential aged care? Mm. Well, it, there are some parts of it that are frustrating uh, because um, we feel like we're two years behind the rest of the, the community, uh, still having the restrictions that, uh, that, that we have, uh, although we realise that for good reason we still need to, uh, uh, to be careful. Uh, but there seems to be much more inertia in, uh, in moving forward. So there's a sense of frustration uh, that is uh, is there. Um, I think I feel that for for our staff uh, because uh, for me, I mean, I I wear a mask all, all day, but I can go into my office for a, a little bit of respite from it. The staff on the floor can't do that, um, and so they're literally in uh, in those masks all day. And even though it, it, it's a, a a great step forward to be able to, to wear the surgical masks. They are still very restrictive. Um, and um, I was sharing this morning that I even find um, nowadays I breathe less deeply than I used to uh, because of being used to, to breathing through, through a mask. 
And if you can imagine some of our staff who are doing that through assisting people with showers and with steam in the, in the bathroom and, and all of the, those things, uh, it really is hard slog. Um, and yet those staff just continue to, to press forward in, um, in, in bearing with uh, that, um, knowing that it's what has to be done for the time being to provide the, the care and show the love of Jesus uh, to people that we've undertaken uh, to, to do. In terms of the resident uh, community, I've been saying uh, to our community, well, at Goodhue to begin with, and, and now Baybreeze too, just how, um, and I use the word proud of them, uh, how they just continue to, uh, to take all of this in their stride. Uh, even when the re restrictions come, there's a, um, there's a, a communal groan <laughs> that, that goes through the place, understandably, but they take it in their, in their stride. Um, and it, it's really um, a testament to, uh, to God's grace and to uh, the patience of, of people uh, being able to abide by uh, the rules for as long as they, uh, they last. But the mood in our homes at the moment is, as I said, without um, uh, the restrictions on pe people being able to, to mix and things like, like that, spirits are very high and, uh, and people are go going about enjoying life in these, um, I, I guess, sunset season of, um, uh, of life. Um, and uh, yeah, it's a delight to be involved in, uh, in their lives. So, uh, Paul, just what, can you give us a couple of prayer points and we might pray now for the mm. communities at Goodyear and Baybreeze. Yeah. Um, I think it would be, be good to continue to pray for the further easing of restrictions and that uh, the people in, uh, in charge of residential aged care will uh, continue to take into account uh, the humanness of, of people and not just the risk of, um, of COVID as a virus that we have needs uh, to be social, to be loved, uh, to be able to spend, uh, spend time together. Uh, that would be a good thing to, um, uh, to pray for. Uh, you can pray for us as a pastoral team uh, too. Um, things are fairly stretched uh, at, at the moment. So I, I look after um, as part of my role, the chaplains in the southern region. Um, and so we have one who's uh, off on extended leave at the moment. So we're plugging gaps uh, at the moment, which means a number of our, our homes don't have the, uh, the number of chaplaincy days that, that, uh, that we should have. Um, so it'd be good to, um, uh, to pray for, uh, for that. There was something else came, popped into my head and it's popped out the other side again. Uh, <laughs> it hit the butter in the middle and skidded okay. straight out. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Why don't we start with those prayer points and after we've prayed for uh, the team at Baybreeze and, and Goodyear, then Margaret will come and lead us in our other intercessory prayer. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you uh, for the whole... Uh, team, residential aged care team, we thank you for that great resource. We thank you that folk in their sunset years can continue to receive such good care. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for the way that you have sustained uh, the staff team and continue to sustain the staff team in the, in the hard slog of all the different restrictions they need to work with. We thank you that some have been eased, but as Paul tells us, there are still restrictions there. We ask, Lord God, that you might continue to give the staff teams endurance, please. And gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for the way that you have sustained the residents uh, through this difficult time. When so many things have been different, Lord God, you have sustained their spirits and sustained them in their community life. We ask, Heavenly Father, that those folk in charge uh, of uh, management uh, would see the importance, Lord God, of encouraging community, uh, of um, not just being focused on infection control, but also being encouraged 
also being focused on encouraging the whole person. And so we ask that they would continue to make good decisions about how to encourage folk in their humanness, in their community, that they might continue to be built up as image bearers of you. Gracious Heavenly Father, we want to uh, pray for the, the pastoral teams across the whole southern region. We thank you for Paul's wisdom and leadership there as he looks across caring uh, for the pastoral teams across all the southern region uh, of Anglicare's homes. We ask, gracious God, that you would uh, uh, sustain him as he decides how staff are to be allocated. And Lord God, we pray that you would give your pastoral care teams that added endurance, that you are with them as they step through each day, that what they are doing is enriching the lives of others. And Heavenly Father, we ask that, that their consciousness of you with them as they do that important ministry might sustain them even as they are stretched. And gracious Heavenly Father, we bring all of this to you in the great name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Friends, would you thank Paul for sharing with us, please? I'm going to ask Margaret to come and lead us in our other intercessory prayer. Thank you, Margaret. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and whose dominion endures through all generations, we come to you humbly, yet with the confidence that your word gives that you are a gracious and loving Father, always attentive as we call to you. Lord, we, we are just overwhelmed at times when we see the world you love broken, polluted and troubled, in need of help and healing. We have been poor husbands of your created world. Help us, Lord, to heal the damage and bring balance and beauty to the work of your hands. Merciful God, we pray that you will reach out as a loving father to those in Turkey, Syria and New Zealand as they struggle with the aftermath of earthquakes and flood. May the nations give generously and quickly and may access be cleared for aid agencies such as Anglican Aid to respond with expertise and understanding, medical and material supplies. Have mercy on all who suffer the miseries of wars and conflicts which are not of their own making. Let your compassion flow, Lord, especially to those in nations such as Ukraine and Russia, to the dispossessed, the wounded and those who mourn the loss of dear ones. If it is your sovereign will, we ask that you will end the destruction and misery of the war in Ukraine and in other places of conflict that people may resume their lives in peace and safety. Grant us patience, Lord, and put a right heart within us, that we will support what is good and just in the world and work towards maintaining the life and beauty of your creation. And Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, as we look to your worldwide church, we pray for our sponsored child, Peace Godwin. May Peace be diligent in her studies, taking full advantage of the opportunities Katoki offers. And may she grow in faith and trust as she learns more about our Lord and Saviour. We give thanks that Therese Jordan continues in her training to be a nurse and pray that she will continue to hold fast to the faith she expressed at Katoki and will have opportunities to show God's love in her life and her work at Bukoba Hospital. We give thanks for the leadership and care of our Willoway Shores management team. Lisa, Karen, Sarah, Carol and Anna, Joe Locke and Rhonda, the maintenance team and Peter, 
Anna and all the cafe staff. And as a replacement is sought for Sherry, may the panel be led to the one you would have for us, Lord. And may that person feel welcomed and settle in easily to their work in the village. And we pray for St Phil's Senior Minister, Eric Churn, as he leads, teaches and guides the staff, the church and his family. Strengthen Viv as she upholds Eric and their sons and as they all grow in trust and faith. As your church militant here on earth, help each one of us, Lord, to be diligent in prayer and Bible study, to be sacrificial in time and money, and in the power of the Spirit, show forth your love to this needy world. And Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gentle Shepherd, <clears throat> as we consider our families and friends and those who live and work in this lovely village, we pray for relief, comfort and healing for all who suffer in mind, in body or in spirit, who are sick or in pain, who are undergoing tests, special treatment and operational recovery, who are anxious, fearful or depressed, who are grieving for any reason. We give thanks for those who care for others. Grant them patience, understanding and strength. We think especially of those in hospital, Val Ellis and Blanche Grant. May they experience skillful yet compassionate care. May your presence surround and sustain them. May they soon return to their life here in the village. We remember those listed for prayer in our newsletter, for those living and working in Goodhue Gardens and in Bay Breeze. Gracious Lord, as your word has reminded us tonight, you hem us in on every side. You know us from conception to the end of our days and are familiar with all our thoughts. Though we are unworthy, you forgive our shortcomings and show us the love of a father. Your hand is upon us and we can know true contentment and peace. Thank you, Father. We pray tonight in the name of our dear Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now would you like to join me in the words of the Lord's Prayer? Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you, Margaret, very much. Friends, in a moment we're going to sing um, our final song, but I thought before we did that I would bring you just uh, some notices uh, that would be helpful for you. Can I just um, remind folk that there are a number of things on the little information table uh, that you came in. Uh, there are some copies of the magazine Southern Cross. There are some Anglicare prayer diaries and some Anglican aid prayer diaries. Both those are great resources for seeing uh, what God is doing at work beyond village land. They're really helpful. So if you'd like to take one, they're there for you to take. Also, if you're here and you don't usually get one of our little weekly bulletins, there are a couple of copies on the... Uh, uh, table there, please feel free to take one as you leave tonight because that will update you on the things that are going on uh, during the week and beyond. And just to let uh, folk know that this week on Thursday we have our first Thursday chapel uh, for the month, uh, for, the, for the year. Uh, you might be conscious of folk who don't yet come to a chapel and you're trying to think, how can I introduce them to chapel? Well, Thursday chapel would be a great way to do that. 
and our little motto is, come for chapel, stay for lunch. That's got to be a winner, hasn't it? <laughs> come for chapel, stay for lunch. Um, so that would be a great thing uh, for you to f be part of. Uh, you'll see there that our World Day of Prayer is uh, on the 3rd of March. This year the, the country we're focusing on is, t is Taiwan and I'm very grateful to Vicki Norman's Bible Study Group. They will be um, hosting us uh, that day. Morning tea will be at 9.30 and the service will be uh, at 10 o'clock. So that'll be a great, thing to, a great thing to be part of. Then on Sunday the 12th of March, we're going to be joined by Bishop Glenn Davies. Uh, those of you that are in, uh, familiar with Anglican things will know that Glenn was the former Archbishop of Sydney and now he looks after the Diocese of the Southern Cross. Glenn's a great Bible teacher and a fairly um, idiosyncratic, unique person. If you come to church that day, it will be a bit of a treat. So you should uh, join us. And that day too, we're going to have lunch together. We're going to have lunch together. Um, so uh, chapel at 10.30 or at 5 o'clock. And lunch, we're going to have lunch starting at 11.45. The sign-up sheet for the lunch is just on the information table there. And one... Uh, it's been a busy week. One roaring omission on my part was that lunch will actually cost $10 a head. I'm sorry, I, I, it just, it, anyway. Um, so I'm going to encourage people, uh, those people who put your names down, just remind you we know where you live, all right? So, so, but if, if you would like to join us that day for lunch, please sign up. There are some little um, envelopes there to put your money in and you can either give that to me tonight or you can put it in the function box that's over in the Reef Centre. Whichever one works for you, that would be great. That would be great. Now, Paul Brigden, I want you to tell us, come up and tell us, um, we've, all had a, we've all got a little flyer on our, um, on our tables about taste and see. And people are asking, people are asking, what is that? What is that? What is that? Thank you. What, what are people asking? What is that? Paul, what is that? I'd better tell you all about it then, hadn't <laughs> I? Uh, look, welcome uh, to the, the service. Thanks for coming. Um, taste and see. Uh, I've had all sorts of questions. Firstly, the, the, a question I had was, um, are you cooking? I think you'll be relieved to know I'm not. Um, that take, we like to run things from time to time that allow people to get an, an idea of the big themes about uh, God, Jesus, the Bible, life, uh, things like that. A, a, a big theme, a big idea of that big message about Jesus. And so we thought, I came across this one, I thought, I like that idea that people can come and uh, taste and see uh, what Jesus is all about. And so it's four sessions running uh, on Wednesdays through March, starting on March the 8th. And in each session there is a theme, uh, a, a, a gospel theme, a Jesus theme, if you like, and there's, it's, it's centred around a meal. Now, we have a special facilitator coming in by the name of Wendy Potts. Um, her parents live in the June building, so if you know Bridget and Don McKern, that's Wendy's parents, um, and, and uh, she's pretty keen to come out and just share uh, a basic idea of what Jesus is all about. So these sessions, are they could be for you if you just want to see what it's about and uh, get an idea of what she's presenting. It could be for your friends who you want to come. It could be for Christians. It could be for non-Christians. It's for people to get an idea of what um, those big themes, uh, those big messages of Jesus are all about. And it's not too many sessions, it's just four. March 8, uh, 15, 22 and 29. It runs from 12.30 till 2 in the lounge. I know we said the Reef Centre and I got another great question. Does that mean everyone in the, in the cafe is going to hear? No, we'll be in the lounge. I've also been asked, is that going to interfere with pie eaters? No, never interfere with the pie eaters. Uh, so the pie eaters are in the glass house. We're going to be running in uh, the lounge, which is the back end of the chapel just next door. And the beauty about that is we can run with three people or 30 people or more, and there's enough room uh, to make it work 
either way. Wendy's a fabulous person. I do hope you'll come and, and just listen to her. She's wonderful to talk to. And if you don't believe me, ask Don and ask Bridget. Uh, they can give you the unvarnished version of, of what Wendy uh, is like and how it's going. Are there any other questions about Taste and See? Oh, there is a cost. Uh, we thought we've got to cover the food cost somehow, so we're just going to charge $15. And if you just want to come up to the first one, see what it's like and go uh, whether you want to come to the, decide whether you want to come to the other three from there, that's fine. Uh, check out the first one, see what you think of it. Um, and if you're interested in coming back, come back the next week. Uh, I've been asked, will there be a sign-up sheet? There will be a sign-up sheet. I'll have it out uh, with all the other sign-up sheets uh, fairly soon. Are there any other questions? Did you have any other questions? Did I miss anything? Great. Um, I hope to see you there. And if you've got any other questions, come and see me. My number's there. You know my email. Get in touch. Paul, thank you so much. Friends, we're going to sing again now. This will be our final... A song for this evening. So we're going to uh, sing a great song called uh, Praise the Lord. So if you're able to stand, please do so as we sing together.
Friends, thank you for joining us uh, this evening for uh, our chapel service. I trust that as we've listened to God's word, as we've talked to him in prayer, as we've been taught from God's word and as we've sung, you have been encouraged to think about the greatness of a God who knows us completely and loves us absolutely. Can I just thank all those people who have been part of our service tonight, our welcomers, uh, our afternoon tea team, all those who've taken part in our service up the front, our musical team, uh, John who read the Bible, Margaret who led our prayer time, each part of the body doing its work that we might be built up. And I just want to take a moment too. Over the last couple of weeks, uh, things have been, uh, with uh, my situation, things have been a bit disrupted. And I just want to thank uh, Paul and I want to thank Margaret because every time something hiccuped and I thought, oh, strike, what's going to happen? Both of them said, it'll be fine, Gary. So I just want to thank them for their grace and their hard work of these last couple of weeks. Thank you very much. And friends, let me close with the final two verses of our psalm, which just speak to us about the greatness of our God in the midst of our reality. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me, and then lead me in the way everlasting. Amen.